Reporting from Arkham Asylum, this is Gotham Rogues. In this video we take a look at the comic book storyline Catwoman Lifelines. Lifelines was the opening story arc of Catwoman's very first own comic series, which was launched in 1993. She had had a 4 issue miniseries in 1989, however this was her first proper ongoing monthly title. Lifelines was published across the first 4 issues of Catwoman, and it was written by Joe Duffy and penciled by Jim Ballant. Because it was 1993, the story takes place in the middle of nightfall, shortly after Bane had broken Bruce Wayne's back and crippled him beneath the waist. During Batman's absence, Bane seized control of the entire Gotham underworld and became the unofficial king of the city. As such, other criminals, including Selina Kyle, were forced to work for him. I can't help but wonder if Christopher Nolan and David Goyer took inspiration from this story for The Dark Knight Rises, as Bane and Catwoman's relationship is very similar in the movie. Selina even mentions having erased all data records of her identity, something she seeks to do in Rises. Anyway, in the story Bane finds out that an unknown person has sent a hitman to kill him. Not quite trusting Catwoman, Bane decides to kill two birds with one stone and tricks the hitman into going after Selina instead. His plan succeeds, but the hitman fails and Catwoman survives the murder attempt. However, her young friend Arizona, a stray girl Selina took in from the streets, is seriously injured in the attack. Selina decides to get revenge and tries to track the hitman down. This proves to be easier said than done, but eventually she finds out that he's fled Gotham and taken a flight to the Caribbean island of Santa Prisca, the homeland of Bane. She follows him there by stealing a ride on Bruce Wayne's private jet, which leads to a pretty amusing scene. Once in Santa Prisca, Selina discovers the country to be rife with poverty, corruption and crime, and she spends her first week there fighting off government soldiers and rescuing innocent villagers. She basically takes on the role of a vigilante, like Batman, and gains a reputation among the people as a hero. Meanwhile, Selina continues her search for the assassin and finds out that he's Guillermo, a Santa Priscan native. Checking up on what's new in Gotham, she also finds out that Bane has been defeated by the new Batman, John Paul Valley, aka Asriel, aka Asbat. After the second part of this story had been published, Asbat had fought and beaten Bane over in the Bat books. Hence, by the third part, Bane is. decommissioned. Back to Santa Prisca, Catwoman manages to track Guillermo down and confronts him just as he's supposed to perform the second part of his contract, namely kill El Jefe del Pais, the country's ruler. However, Selina interrupts the hit and rescues El Jefe's life, which brings her on the dictator's good side. He invites Selina to join him at his palace, which leads her to the man who ordered the hits on Bane and El Jefe. I don't want to spoil too much, but it's a man who sought to seize power over the nation, and who wanted to get rid of all potential competition. Saying the plot out loud makes it seem a little muddled and messy, but the comic reads a lot better than what it may seem. It's not an amazing story, but a very solid one, and also a historically important one, as it was the opening arc of Catwoman's first comic series. It's really in these issues that we see Selina Kyle grow into the character that she is today. This was the beginning of the modern Catwoman, and many of her now typical traits and characteristics are on display here. And that's really the best part of this comic. Joe Duffy does a great job at writing Catwoman as a weathered, cynical, morally ambiguous warrior with a heart of gold. You never really know where she stands. Yes, Selina does good deeds, and even genuinely cares for and loves people, but she also commits crimes, and doesn't seem to mind rubbing elbows with a mass murdering dictator. She's a fascinating protagonist, and a far cry from both the goody two-shoes superheroes and the pure evil supervillains. Of course, another big part of the draw to this comic and Catwoman's entire 90s run is Jim Ballant's artwork. It was he who created her new skin-tight purple outfit, with an opening at the back of her cowl that allowed her hair to be let out. I guess you could say it was a modernization of her classic costume after a few years of experimenting. 
To this day, it remains my favorite Catwoman design. I mean, yeah, I love the current all-black goggle outfit too, but this one still takes the cake. Selina Kyle has always been an attractive woman, but it was Jim Balance who made her into a mega babe. Not many draw her as curvaceous and sensual as Balance did. And in these early issues, Ballant was at his best. As the decade progressed, his artwork got a little sloppier and wasn't always as fantastic as it is here. I don't know if there's a story behind that or if he just got tired of drawing Catwoman stories for so many years. I mean, he did it from 1993 to 2000, so who can blame him? So, there you have it. That's Catwoman Lifelines. An essential Catwoman storyline that every fan of the feline fatale should read. Join me at Arkham Asylum again sometime, for some more rogueness.